Well, welcome everybody to lunch break. I'm, I was just telling them before I'm super excited about this one. Um, I'm already feeling all the energy. So powerful women in, in here. So um, we are going to be talking today about pivoting your business. So huge topic right now. Um, I'm going, first of all, I'm going to present the women that I have with me. Uh, we have here Martha Sievenhar. She's a coach and consultant for creatives and entrepreneurs. We have Vivian Olorun, author and entrepreneur. We have uh, Via Alvarez, branding and website designer for wellness entrepreneurs. Janine San Luis, owner of The Win Woman. And Juliana Faust, career coach and HR consultant. Okay, so first of all, we always like to start um, with this question and I'm going to, to ask it to you, which is what are you feeling grateful for right now? And you can start just as you feel it. Hi, Esther, I'll go first. Uh, well, there's lots to be grateful for. So if I have to choose one thing, I'm definitely very grateful for my health. During this entire thing, you know, we've been able to stay very healthy, everyone in my family, all my friends. Uh, I had one friend that maybe we're not sure what he had, but either way, he's fine. So definitely very thankful for, you know, for my breath, um, no need for ventilators and things like that and my health, so. That makes perfect sense and I will jump right in. Hello everyone, I'm Vivian. I am grateful for the ability to enjoy my pregnancy. Because of COVID-19, I am number one, not infected with the coronavirus, which I'm very thankful for. But also I had geared myself up mentally to prepare to kind of power through going to all of these events and showing up for my business and showing up in many different spaces. And just so happens because of this quarantine that I'm able to go through my pregnancy in a very comforted, uh, slow pace. And I'm grateful for that. I'm embracing that process for sure. I'm just going to say that maybe at the end we can see that belly. <laughs> oh, I'm happy Please. to show my belly. I, not, I love not pregnant that bellies. <laughs> so I'm happy to do that. Well, I'll jump right in, ladies. Hi, and welcome to everyone who's listening in to, um, to our lunch hour. Um, and I'm Yanni. And, and yeah. really, what I'm grateful for is, um, you know, walking into almost week six of this, um, of this quarantine and this, and this new normal, um, as everybody has coined it. Um, I'm grateful for communities like Las La Comadres and, and even for um, ladies I've been able to surround myself with that have we still are keeping each other accountable on our goals um, and have been pivoting. So, you know, I have to shout out my, my little group of um, accountability buddies that we are um, getting on at 7.15 in the morning on Tuesdays to talk about checking in with ourselves, seeing what we're doing and um, helping one another, lifting one another to pivot our businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'll follow on that. Um, every agree with everything I've heard so far. Um, I'm I'm thankful for human beings. I think mm -hmm. right now we're seeing kind of like the best and the worst. And the my personal experience has been that people are doing more and being more generous than I've ever seen. And so I'm really thankful to be in a place in Miami and part of this group and, and just part of the ecosystem um, on planet earth now that is looking at this as a way to be uh, heart centered and heart opening and recognizing that we're all going through this together. So I'm feeling a tremendous sense of community and togetherness and um, generosity. So it's pretty awesome. Oh, they're beautiful guys. Uh, well, hi, I'm Bia and one thing I'm very grateful for, this is going to sound silly, I think, but just being able to see the sunset every day. Uh, I'm usually working through the sunset. And I know this sounds like something so small, but working for so many hours, and I'm sure that all of us are doing this, uh, 
taking the time to sit for 10 minutes in my balcony or go downstairs and experience some sunset while usually I might be in an office or a co-working space makes all the difference and centers me to be able to serve my clients and my family better. So I think, you know, this is giving us opportunity to just look inside and, and, and you know, find our needs and being there for ourselves, like you're saying about your pregnancy, uh, instead of being like workaholics all the time, like, oh, let's take a moment and take a breath and uh, be there for ourselves so we can be there for other people. Mm. Just now you were mentioning about, you were talking about the, this new normal, and I think that connects really well with the topic that we are going to talk today, because um, some people tend to talk about when things get back to normal and mm. in some ways like mm, we are might not be getting back to where we were we are going to a new thing so which is why pivoting is so important right now and i wanted to ask you um i know you are all talking with lots of people your clients and what's the the, the main thing that you are seeing uh, what are the experiences that you are seeing they are getting and, and what are, are they struggling with? Bia, you're uh, on mute. Would you like to? Oh, no. Okay, you go. <laughs> go, go. On April, oh, I'm happy to. On April 1st, uh, Flourish Media, my company, we had the honor of hosting a webinar with the Miami Tourism Board. And we had hundreds of business owners that were on that webinar and the entire conversation was about having a continuity plan for being able to work from home. So businesses that are very much used to having an office space where people can see them on a very regular basis or being able to connect with individuals uh, on a face-to-face -face basis were really having a challenge with making the transition to being a digital or virtual company. And and getting comfortable with using virtual tools that a lot of us who are uh, entrepreneurs, consultants who operate from our home offices very regularly probably have been using things like Zoom, GoToMeeting, Skype, Uber Conference, the list goes on. And uh, the number one challenge that I saw from those individuals were that they are experts in their business, that they know how to run their business and they have been prepared. They prepared with the hurricane plan. They uh, know how how and what to do if the business needed to be shut down for a week but the uncertainty of how long this is going to happen really was a challenge from what i was hearing from those individuals who are on that webinar with the miami tourism board and they wanted to understand what was the girth how robust are these virtual systems and can they work long term mm -hmm. I think uh, some, a, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Bia. <laughs> uh, something I've been seeing through our, like my clients is a lot of them, because I build their websites and their branding and maybe I finished working with them months ago. For the first time, they're being able to sit down and write blog posts and write emails for their business and grow and finally launch the store on their website. So I'm having a lot of them come back to me and say, Oh, I finally wrote like all those blogs. Can you help me put it up on the site? Or I finally took photos of my products. Like I can have my, my store go live. So I'm seeing that. And, you know, in the beginning it was a bit scary because we didn't know what was going to happen. And a lot of them um, were seeing their income maybe decrease a bit because things were shifting. But it's exciting to see them being like, oh, now I can actually grow and I can invest time into my business. So it gives you that sense of hope and I'm really excited to, to see them go through that. You know, I'll jump in and, and just share. Um, I think innovation plays a lot of part. Um, I think after the initial shock of what has happened, um, a lot of our, our clients and our business owners are trying to think out of the box. Um, a number of my, so I do a lot of sales strategy and um, to, to scale businesses. And one of the things that I've noticed is I have nonprofit and for-profit businesses. And one of the things that I've noticed is that before this, a number of them brought on, because they've been able to scale, brought on new employees. And now this happened and everybody was 
freaking out. Um, I will say myself included because I onboarded new people in my business and um, we're freaking out because now you're like, you just, you know, this person left whatever they were doing to come work with you. And now this happens and you definitely want to do everything in your power to keep them. Um, so that's something that I've noticed um, happening, but innovation, people are, are doing things differently. I mean, you look at businesses like um, restaurant owners that now, um, you know, curbside wasn't an option, you know, and like Michael's, for example, I know that's a bigger business, but um, I had a colleague that had said that she had gone to Michael's recently to get some supplies and arts and craft things for her child. And they're doing curbside and they are Lysoling your, your back seat. They're putting the things in. These are very convenience driven things that I think past this pandemic and past what's going on is something that as a business strategy will be uh, fruitful for them. So I see a lot of innovation uh, increase customer service um, to provide really quality uh, care and quality um, delivery to to their clientele is what I'm seeing. Yeah, I work with a lot of creative industries, and I'm I'm seeing a lot of creativity <laughs> around going live and um, taking advantage of digital platforms. So every everybody from Fountainhead Studios and Residency that are hosting uh, for the very first time the opportunity to actually go into an artist's studio, which is kind of a magical thing if you think about it. It's not something that you necessarily have access to on a regular basis. So um, being able to offer them a chance to look inside that creative place. New World Symphony is going online. They have a new, they're bringing back digital content and adding more with MTT. So people are really rising to what can we do to actually bring people more into the world of what we're creating. I've seen a lot of orchestras that now are, are doing things like they're showing you how they make reads and things like that. So people are being very, very creative. Very cool. Well, um, a big part of what I do, um, most people probably don't realize, is that um, I'm an HR consultant. So in addition to being a career coach, the bulk of my business is doing HR consulting and really being a strategist for that human capital. And what a lot of the companies are seeing now is exactly that pressure on people and the business. Like you can sell whatever you want, but if you don't have people behind you know, behind those strategies and people with the right mindset, you're really not going to thrive and excel. So I know that we've been talking about, we're going through the squares here, and we talked about all of our lovely entrepreneurs, and I'll echo what Bia was saying when it comes to me, in that now I've taken a fresh look at my website, I've taken a fresh look at my strategies. Not that I necessarily have a fresh mind, uh, because I'm working through a crisis, but it has allowed me that. But I would like to focus on the intrapreneurs because intrapreneurs are people too. <laughs> and they're working in companies and the support that I'm giving now uh, are for big companies, people that are working just like they were working before, but under different conditions at home. So these people have not lost their jobs and they're not sick. They're seeing that they're either working from home while having to homeschool and have other people in the house and in the mix. So you have to put things down to go make lunch, put things down to go clean a bathroom, put things down to go change a diaper. There's a lot of pressure on that and the workload has not eased up. And now we have the pressure that, well, maybe I'm not gonna make it through performance reviews. Maybe I'm not gonna you know, keep this job because my performance is not up to par. On the other hand, folks that don't have kids at home that are living in a small apartment in Chicago, all they're here are ambulances around them all day. And it's putting a lot of stress in the system. And those folks are not used to working from home. So they don't know when to break. I wake up in my pajamas, I get my coffee, I sit in front of the computer, it's 18 hours later and they're burnt out. So, you know, my, my job here has really been to be a, that active listener and to just provide solutions literally on the fly because things are changing every day. I have noticed a lot of um, people just trying to find that mental health uh, balance, looking at the sunset, finding time with family, you know, trying to find the joy in things. But I will say, even for me, it's been really, really difficult because my workload has not eased up. So anyway, entrepreneurs are people too, so. <laughs> <laughs> totally. 
Also, I want to invite everybody that's listening to share their stories. Uh, they might even be getting some advice from these women, which I highly recommend. So please send, send your questions, your comments, share your stories. We are more than happy to listen to you. And uh, just what you said, uh, Juliana, connected with something that I wanted to talk with you all because we are talking and we've been talking in previous lunch breaks about mental health and such, but when we talk about pivoting, um, there's a mindset component, which is super abstract, super um, far away for some to just grasp, especially in a moment of crisis such as this. And I, I would like to know your thoughts on how, what can we do in terms of mindset um, in, in these times when we are trying to pivot and adapt to it? Well, since someone muted, maybe I can just jump right in on that one. And, you know, there's a billion dollar industry just on books and audiobooks on mindset. So I'm definitely not here to like give everyone the secret sauce. What I am here to say is that we know, okay, I am a fully recovered workaholic, <laughs> type A perfectionist. And what I know about me is that I constantly raise the bar. So if this was acceptable last month, now all of a sudden, you know, I need to do this and be a super mom and be fit and be cool and have a good attitude and sleep nine hours. So it's like the bar always increases. And I think that part of shifting, pivoting your business and shifting your mindset is also understanding your own boundaries and your own limits. And that for me during this quarantine has definitely been eye-opening and has helped me help others in understanding that we've never been through this before. No one knows what this is like. No one knows where we're going to be. So given the circumstances that we're in, it's totally okay to look at things a different way. And if that means lowering your bar, <laughs> God forbid, I think that that's okay. And if that means shifting your business, shifting your products, shifting your services, shifting how many hours you work, when you're working, is it in the middle of the night? Is it when the kids are asleep? No kids, okay, cool, but I wanna go and escape to some closed beach and hope that no one catches me because I'm going crazy. That's okay, you know? And I think that that's part of that mindset shift is shifting what you, your rules of what you think need to be right during a time of crisis and during a time of uncertainty that we've never lived through before. I hope that helps as a piece of advice. You talked about boundaries and I, and I wanted to just kind of jump in there for a second, Juliana. And, and I, I will tell you one of the things that I feel a lot of entrepreneurs, women, um, everybody really during this crisis has happened is this, this extremity of guilt that is um, coming to you because all of a sudden um, you have what is perceived all this time, no commute, no this, no that, and you're at home. So you're expected to, you know, your productivity has to be at another degree, at another level. And there's times that you feel like innovating and creating, and there's times that you don't. You want to lay in front of the couch and, and watch TV, and that's basically what you want to do. Um, I think that the mindset thing is, one, um, being able to set really effective boundaries um, with with who's around you, but even on, on your clients as well, um, and being compassionate at this time understanding and meeting people where they're at. I think at more than ever, um, that's a learning lesson um, that I have learned hardly in the sense of like, I used to always think, well, this is the bar. I have set the bar here. You got to rise to this bar to meet me, right? Because it's this conception of, of like, well, if I can do this, why can't you do this? You know, um, I think more than ever right now, it's, it's meeting people where they're at. And I know that like for me as a, in my business, you know, I, I'm the one that's supposed to hold my, my clients accountable. I'm the one that's the one that's like, okay, what's going on with this? Have you called that person? And I'm realizing that there needs to be a level of compassion here um, for where they can, how far you can push somebody. Um, but likewise, in your personal life and in, in your surrounding circumstances, with your loved ones, your family is, you know, letting them know, you know, mama needs a break. I just need five minutes to myself or whatever it is and taking that, that time, but like being, being very firm for you. And I think if we put ourselves first, even if it's just for a little bit of time, 
the mindset shift and the allowance for creativity will come. It's just a matter of that battling that guilt and making sure it's not something that we succumb to. Uh, I'm main to that. Okay. And you know, in all of the diversity talks that I give, we talk about the gender differences and how women, we are the CEOs of our house, whether you like it or not on top of having your job. And I think that sometimes saying, you know what, those dishes are going to sit in the sink today and that's okay. Exactly. And no one is going to die and the sun's going <laughs> to rise tomorrow. And yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> When it comes to pivoting mindset, one of the things that when it comes to your um, self-care, I think, and for me and my business in Flourish Media, we spend a lot of time talking to industry leaders and communicating with those who are leading the charge and making sure that they're taking advantage of their self-care, but also being mindful of who they are apart from their business, right? Because some of us are introverts and we enjoy having this time alone but time alone is never time alone that's extended for six weeks or four weeks where you're not engaging with others. But then we find that a lot of the entrepreneurs and the leaders that I work with tend to be very charismatic, passionate individuals who are, you know, used to standing in front of large sets of people who are used to to working a room. And those individuals are really operating on a sense of um, just exhaustion because like for myself, I'm an extrovert. I love being around other people. It's a part of why I love being a member of Las Comadres because it gives me an opportunity to step outside of my business to just be another human being. And I find that the leaders right now in this space are needing to effectively rotate their boundaries and be able to express when they need time alone to be able to reset. Because when you're that sense of stability for others when you are the one who's who's supposed to be able to give some sense of um you know what do we do next all of this planning you're also a human being that requires time to get away so that you can operate and to show up as your best set. So when it comes to mindset, I want for everyone who's listening and of course say it in the comments and let us know if you've been experiencing this as well, uh, is if you're an extrovert, you don't have any space to draw in that energy how are you recharging yourself how are you finding ways to to reset and get that optimism that passion that charismatic personality that you're known for and then again releasing the guilt if you are not there right now when i talk to a lot of business owners one of the things that i've been encouraging them to do is to remember the humanity in their business and to remember the humanity in their messaging as a business. Yes, you want people to know that you're, you're open for business or that you're closed for the time being or that you have different operating hours, but it's okay to say, you know what? We have X number of people, we're working from home, this is a challenging time for us. And the pivot that those businesses need to do, those of you who are communicating in a very structured corporate way, which is my secret sauce, my area of expertise. However, on a day to day, I'm a pretty casual person. You know, I'm, I'm pretty chill. But when it comes to communicating on your business, remember that your business is there to serve other people. Therefore, it is okay for you to express those very human feelings that not only you, but all of the separate individual people who come together to make your business operate in real, it's okay to put that in your messaging as a company as well. You know, don't be, don't be ironclad. Let other people know we're dealing with these challenges, but here are the steps that we put in place and here's what we're hoping to come out of it and ask for help from your community. They have a wealth of information to be able to build that community that you're building because right now, we may, like we talked about, where you may have been having a lot of uh, advantages right before. Maybe you just onboarded a lot of people to your business. You just brought on a, a number of different contracts. You're excited about it. And now those things have been rattled. And that's okay. But I want you to take 
into account that businesses that last the test of time find time to double down on their brand saliency and their brand loyalty. And your customers and clients are going to be more loyal to your brand when they know that you care. Mm-hmm. So consider that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, just yeah, I totally, totally agree. Um, <laughs> Esther, did you want to move on to another question? Um, actually, we have a, a question that I, well, we have two questions in the comments and I want to give priority to that. Let's okay, so it. Christina Reddick is, uh, is asking, I've been struggling with a virtual pivot for my event production business. We mainly host triathlons. I have finally come up with a virtual triathlon solution. I'm thinking of a pay what you can pricing model. What are your ideas on this new pricing model that has emerged amid COVID-19? I'll take that one. So I'm working with a lot of people again who are used to working in a particular context that is completely driven by events and by being there in person. So, um, you know, whether it's a mentorship program, making social impact in Miami Gardens, or it's uh, an art museum that cannot open itself to the public right now. Um, really what, what we're seeing is you can't get it wrong if you experiment. So if you are not sure, but you want to try something out, give it a time limit and test it out. And you're going to get data and you're going to see, and like Esther said at the beginning, we're coming out into who knows what kind of atmosphere. We don't really know what the world is going to be like on the other side of this, or if there is another side of this, right? So this is the perfect time to get creative, to look at what is not working and let it go. Um, and especially if it costs you money, right? (laughs) Another thing is like, just experiment, get creative and do small experiments. From that, you're going to have life experience. You're going to see where, where people are. Cause if you're just doing this in your head, it's just within you and your world, but getting something out there that people can nibble on, they can give you feedback on. You're not necessarily committing the next three years to this. This is just a test, right? But I think it's a great idea. If you're feeling called in that direction, give it a, give it a deadline, give it a timeline, see what happens. And then, you know, from there you can, you can pivot or you can refine or you can double down if it's really, really working. But yeah, if you're feeling compelled to experiment, I say, this is the time you can't really get it wrong because nobody knows what's happening right now. Right. So give it a try. That's, that's where I'm coming from. Do you have any more ideas to share with um, Christina? You know, I would I would share as far as the pricing model because I think that what's happening, um, I'm seeing it from my nonprofits, but I'm also seeing it from um, some of my clients that um, are not wanting to um, to to sell right or ask for money for for that case for the for the nonprofit world. Um, and I think the focus here is really to cultivate your relationships and making sure that this is a period of time that you take a step back and you cultivate what you need to um, of your client base and, and asking that question of, you know, how can I serve you at this time, right? Um, I will tell you on, on the athletic side, since this, this question is, uh, you know, it's a business that you mentioned triathlons. Um, I will say I was in very very big avid orange theory goer and the last 30 days have been absolutely devastated that it's been closed. Um, And I noticed that there have been a lot of momentum with these virtual type marathons and that they'll still mail you a, a medal if you're able to complete the task. So I would say to consider that. And instead of just saying, do what you can, I would say a suggested um, amount, you know, do what you can, but this is a suggested amount. Um, I noticed that for even my, you know, nonprofit clients is, um, you know, sharing your message of your needs. This period of time is not for you to stop selling or stop asking for money, but just really being candid on what are your current needs and what is the 
what is this situation bringing to your client base? So if you're in the educational sector, there are students that are suffering at this time that won't be able to register for classes and won't be able to graduate. If you're in the healthcare sector, there are a number of families that have been burdened, you know, healthcare workers that have been burdened during this time is their relief efforts or support that you can ask. So not being afraid to stepping up and, and really describing to your client base what you need, but as it, as it pertains to your specific situation, you know, I, I wouldn't discourage a suggested amount of what, you know, for, for the contribution or for what you're trying to do with your event. Beautiful. Anything else? Okay. Um, actually, Christina had another question, so we can go right into it. Do you think it's appropriate to reach out to our past event participants individually via text or call to see if they are okay and just check in and ask how we can support them during this time? Or is that too intrusive? Yes. Yes, right? Yes. And see a lot of thumbs yes. up. <laughs> yeah. So that's that that's clear christina yeah you go you ask them how they are doing i actually think that's that's super honest and it's not like you are selling you are genuinely just asking as a human being how they are doing so yeah totally you know esther oh, um, actually yeah. can i just add something Please. here because this is my whole bullet point on pivoting your business actually is this whole conversation and is it okay to ask if you're okay? I'm worried about you, but is it gonna be considered soliciting? Should I call, should I text? I think that as a planet, uh, we're going through something and the beauty of Las Comadres is that we are all on this journey of awakening and we are all connected and we are already in tune with what I'm gonna say, which is amazing. Because in the corporate world that I navigate and that I work in and everything, this type of conversation is taboo. But we know in this group that as a planet, we're going through something bigger. And that the time off that we have right now is to do what I'm calling the homework. What is your homework? What are we really doing to pivot ourselves and our businesses for the better good? You know, compassion and love and care and all of those things vibrate so high that if it doesn't bring benefits to your business, it's bringing benefits to someone else and to the planet and humanity needs you right now. So all of those negative voices that you have inside, all of those fears and all of those naysayers, it's time to put that in the closet because the world needs you. The world needs your text. The world needs your email. The world needs that thing that only you know how to do because you are so freaking special. So it's time to stop thinking that you're not ready and write another blog. You don't. Go, now is the time and this will pivot your business, which in turn, will pivot our entire society and our entire community for this new era and our new reality. So if it wasn't okay before to reach out when we're in quarantine, who said that? And when was the last time we ever did that? <laughs> so coming and showing up yeah. from the heart, I think that your intuition will come alive and you will come up with new service offerings that will then match the law of supply and demand to speak about economics and your business. And it'll be natural, it'll be effortless. So you know what? Call those people, have a virtual event, send them something in the mail. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see the results. Juliana, I need you as an alarm clock. Like I need you to like record yourself and just be and your Is motivating self recorded? and just be like, get up and do your best today. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I and do, this is not motivational speaking, blah, 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 okay? And the no, people that true. know me know that I'm zero, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is real. Like we're going through something. And if you are away from the news like me, I mean, you, you need to be blind, right? <laughs> Unless you have your mask up to here. <laughs> not to see that we're going through something. And I think it's time for us to put all those fears aside and show up, you know? With and me. I think, I mean, Juliana giving she's giving you the real real and this goes back to what i was sharing before about remembering the humanity of your business i don't care if you sell a product or a service at the end of the day 
There's a human being that is benefiting from what you are offering. You are serving people whether you know it or not. You are helping them to alleviate a pain point and like bringing solutions to their life every day with the services and products that you offer. And that being said, yes, you have to remember that in this moment where we're all going through a pandemic, we are all concerned. People are dreaming more intensely. People are having issues sleeping. People are trying to navigate relationships that were rocky. There are some of us who, you know, God bless them, are dealing with domestic violent um, situations, toxic relationships, addiction. There are so many things that are happening and people are confined to their homes. And they need to know that when you're running your business, that those people are not just a paycheck to you. Mm -hmm. It deserves to know that, that when someone is paying and they're exchanging, they're giving that energy to you through the currency that they give you for your products and your services or for the nonprofit, the mission that you support, is that they are more than just money to you. And this is the time to let people know that. I know that with Flourish Media, one of the things that we did very early on in the pandemic was that we individually called every single active active client and let them know we care about you, we're just checking on you. And we did that eventually through March. We were able to do that for every single past client that we've ever had. We were able to check in and just say, I hope you're okay. I hope that you're healthy. I hope that you're well. And we didn't do that with any intentions beyond letting them know that we care about them as a human being. And in all honesty, we raised business because of making those calls. I mean, as a company, we also have committed to having free masterclasses every Wednesday in our private Facebook group. And we do that. We do it. Honestly, like I said, I'm an extrovert. I need, I need to be around other people so I mean we do we do it because we care and it's been wonderful so yes you should let people know that you care about them 100 percent. you know and the last thing I'll say on that point because that was my one bullet (laughs) is that um I I read somewhere I'm actually Brazilian so this is a Brazilian blog thing so Bia if you're interested um and it said that the issue that people are having in not finding this quiet space is not because you can't go outside is because you're afraid of going in, you know? So because you can't go out, you're forced to go in. And this is our time to also go in and, you know, as it relates to our business, Bia was saying, you know, let me look at my website. Let me write a blog. Let me finally do things that make sense. So because we are comadres and we, you know, work from the heart, I think that this is a time to look, to look in and do just that. Yeah, I'd like mm-hmm. to add something about this as well. Um, I think that as we move through this uncertain times, a lot of questions are going to come up, like this question, should I email my clients to see if they're okay? Is that going to rub off the wrong way? There's a lot of questions like this are going to come, and there's going to be a right way and a wrong way to do it. The way that you email them and the words that you use can make it sound like, you're looking for a business or you just actually care. And I think the best way to answer those questions and to write the best copy uh, would be to go back to the why you started your business, why you want to help these people and what are your core values? Because it's always going to be that you want to serve them and you want to help them. And then it's going to answer your question like, yes, I want to email them because I care and I want to know how they're doing. And then it's going to lead you to write the best email you can because you're keeping that why in mind when you're creating those contents to, to reach them. Mm-hmm. I love that. I just want to kind of build on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Um, this really is when we, when we don't know what, what to hold on to the values absolutely are what we hold on to and i i've been um working with a number of clients um a coach and consultant and a lot of times when they think about well what are the products what are the programs what should i do the question always comes back to like well who do you what do you stand for and how can you use this as an opportunity to demonstrate and live your values so one of my clients immediately decided they do after school mentoring programs um, and, and instrument instruction 
they decided that they were going to pay all of their mentors through the end of the season, no matter what. And they were going to find a way to do it. And they just paid it forward. They're like, this is us living our values. I was really inspired by that. I made a personal donation because I just thought that was so great. Um, and I, you know, it was them really stepping out into the light saying like, this is an opportunity that defines us, not only in the work that we do, but who we are and how we show up for our community and this community of people who rely on us. So I thought that was a beautiful thing. And, you know, when everything is uncertain and we don't know what tomorrow will look like, definitely totally agree with you. You always have your purpose and your values and how you choose to express those is how you are seeing now and also in the future. You're not doing it because of that, but you're, you're going to be remembered for how you showed up at this time in the future. So whether that's in your life, in your family, um, in your partnership, your marriage, um, whatever it is, and then also your business. But this is a time to look within. I love that. Somebody, I've been hearing this quote, like the, all the problems that are wrong with humanity is because people are afraid to be in a room by themselves. <laughs> so, you know, how can we take advantage of this and, and maybe do some of the inner work that will help us really, if you don't know what your values are, maybe this is the perfect time to actually say like, yes, what is my why for me as my, as myself and in my family as, and definitely as my business. And then how how am I not showing up like that? Or how have I not? And then recalibrate. And again, maybe this isn't turning the ship 180 degrees. Maybe this is just like a little pivot, but it's a great time to look within and then think about how do I show that out into the world? So. Mm -hmm. I'm loving this. I could be listening to you all day. Um, and we have another question, which is great. Um, Eva, Eva Silod is asking, um, she says, I closed an LLC recently. However, I keep on developing my brand. Is it advisable to renew it or not? And if so, when? Well, um, that's such a great question. I actually dealt with a, a number of different business owners in 2000 and 18 who were who were dealing with this challenge and the way that we left it was when you open a business you you do it because you believe that you have a product or a service that can serve people but in a very practical way when you have a business you also have tax benefits that you're going to get because you've keep because you have the business things like us being home in this pandemic um, opportunities like Skillshare or Udemy any additional types of education that you add to yourselves while you're while you are at home or working with people like Bia who to update your website these kind of marketing expenses that you're making I think that when you're starting it's easy to kind of look at the the um, price tag of things and not remember that because you have a business all of those items are now tax deductible which is a very important thing to keep in mind. So it, when it comes to the idea of keeping your LLC, I recommend it. I, re I recommend it wholeheartedly as a, as a millennial because we deal with a lot, of <laughs> a lot of student loan and student debt. However, the situation, our banking and everything is set up in such a way that if you are a business owner, there's a lot of different tax benefits that can help to supplement the debt that you will accumulate as you're building your business. So from my por point of view, I would say it is worth it for you to keep the LLC just so that all of the investments that you're making, because you said that you are still maintaining your personal brand, that those items can then be written off in your taxes exactly in July, coincidentally. It doesn't have to be April 15th this year. Uh, it's been delayed. So that's my two cents. I hope it helps. Okay, great. Then we've talked a lot about mindset and the, the more human side of it all. And I would also want to talk about, okay, I imagine that I have the right mindset. Um, I know the place that I'm coming from and, and, and I know my purpose, but how do I start? When it gets to 
planning and just the more operational way like what would be the first step if um, if i want to by the way eva is thanking you it does help she says so thank you um so yeah if if i uh, assuming that i have the right mindset what is the next step i should be working on as uh, in a sense of uh, planning and actually doing the stuff so this answer might sound a little annoying but everyone here will agree that your first step is the first step <laughs> just take the first step you know i gave myself analysis paralysis for so many years and not knowing my first step and am i going to break everything if then i'm going to have to like redo what if i do it wrong now and uh, just take the step whatever step you decide it should be first it's going to be perfect for you and i think that that over planning and analysis paralysis is what we need to stop doing immediately and just get out there and uh, follow our purpose and it's already amazing if the person already knows what that purpose and the why is so so i'll jump in here and, and i and i i agree i think first step you just have to just first of all you have to stop overthinking i think we do a lot of overthinking all the time um one of the things though i, I and i understand the immediate freak out, right? For a lot of business owners during this time, right? You just sort of like, oh my God, what happened um, for me as a, as, a, as a speaker and as a consultant, you know, a lot of trainings, right? Conferences got rescheduled or canceled or, you know, what happened, you know, and all this revenue that you're about to get in in the next, you know, quarter, all of a sudden disappeared. Um, so one of the things that I had mentioned um, in, to my client base, but also to um, some of the following that I had um, on Instagram, Instagram was taking inventory right now of the all the assets that you currently have like I'm talking about all the products and services go back to your shelf of the ideas that you had and you haven't pulled them out and pull them out take inventory of every single thing and it's all your strengths your weaknesses your potential strengths like what can you offer right now and bring to the table and what can you just digest i mean even if it's a journal however best you learn for me i like still writing paper to pen or pen to paper and so and it's just saying okay what are these product offerings how can i pivot after you do all the inventory how can i pivot each one of these does it make sense to pivot in my industry right now um how can i take advantage of the time like you know I, I mentioned, I know that somebody mentioned was an event planner. Like right now, I noticed that the, the sweet spot for timing on this are either lunch and learns like we're doing right now, or like that 2 p.m., 3 p.m. time frame. A lot of people don't want to do a webinar at 6 o'clock at night or 7 p.m., like our happy hour times, because guess what? We've been on Zoom meetings all day long with people. And the last thing we want to do is get on another Zoom meeting, um, even if it's with cocktails. So, I mean, I think that it's a matter of, you know, taking the first step is, is looking inward, seeing all the things that you can provide, taking inventory of the strengths and developing a plan or course of action um, in making sure that you're offering the right things. You know, in the cultivation phases, I know we talked about that and cultivating our clients at this time and, and, and reaching out to people. The question remains, and I think it's a huge question to ask, is how can I serve you at this time? how can i serve you at this time what is it that you currently need you know and having that question that like you'd be really surprised about the answers that are provided during that time and things that you might have not even thought about maybe a potential even new revenue source that you hadn't even explored yet so that's something that i would offer is taking inventory of the current offerings that you have pivoting and innovating in what you can offer um, and really asking that questions with your clients I just want to hop sorry. on. Sorry, you, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I've been there and um, I am also a performer. I'm a classically trained professional musician. And I know that you can't be in the practice room all day long and actually be a professional musician. You actually have to get out on stage where guess what? There's a hundred percent uncertainty every time you perform on stage. I've, I've had, I've inhaled my hair. I've broken my reed. I've had the music upside down and backwards. I've had a wind gust come and blow it off. You're always dealing with uncertainty. Here's the thing. It's not as scary as that sounds, but this is why I encourage people to do like a little baby experiment, but you're going to learn through experience. 
practice. So if you just overthink it and you're trapped in the practice room, you're not sharing your gifts with the world. You're depriving all of us of the special, amazing thing that only you are here to create, but you're not going to get experience unless you go out on stage. So I would encourage you, I know it might feel a little scary, but do like a small thing as Seth Godin would say, just ship it, just get it out into the world because then you'll get some sort of something back. And that whole, how can I serve you? Sometimes you ask that and people will tell you, and sometimes like the Ford um, Model T, they didn't know what they wanted. They would have said faster horses, right? So sometimes you gotta just like get a test model of something, put it out there and then get feedback based on what you're doing. From there you can recalibrate, but I totally hear you. I was scared to go full time for a long time in my business. I finally did it about a year ago. It's the best thing I've ever done. This is me living my values. And so, you know, what a gift to be unburdened by like, the what if and the not feeling ready it's not gonna feel ready. It never feels ready when you're time to go on stage, but we're waiting, your audience is there. We wanna hear and, and be part of your success. So also call in your network. How can we help you feel supported? Because you are so supported, especially right now. Vivian, you're gonna say something? I was. Um, I wanted to say when it comes to being able to look at what's working, um, one of my nicknames for my clients is the mini mogul money magnet. And <laughs> the reason why I have that nickname is uh, not because I'm obsessed with money. It's just that I know that money likes order. And when you do things in order, you will make money. When you service people, they will thank you for it. And in our modern uh, economy, the way that we live every day, we're not going to hug, hug you and kiss you, but we will pay you. So the, co the concentration needs to be on how you can service other people. And one thing that I would recommend when, you know, when you talk about doing inventory is looking at what people are paying you for. Because a lot of times when, um, when I do an assessment of a business as a marketing advisor is we'll find that a business has many different services or many different products or many variations on something. And you'll find that all of those things are not bringing in bottom line revenue to your business, that it tends to be a uh, choice items, elite items within your company that you really should probably be double downing on and giving more of. So I think that if you're trying to say where do I start it's of course making the decision to begin as Juliana has shared with us making a commitment to that mindset and taking a step um, at Flourish Media Conference our thing was take action but then you say I'm ready but to do what well if you want to make money look at the thing that people are paying you for the most consistently or the things that bring in the most revenue and then build backwards from there so that you can provide more of that to people um, and when it comes to, again, remembering the humanity in your business, a part of that might be that you don't know what, what it is that you offer. You just are not clear on that. And um, I wanted to mention that, you know, I published a book last year. It's called Stumbling Through Adulthood. And Stumbling Through Adulthood is actually an interactive journal that has stories and questions inside of it so that you can be okay with being and going in and being real about who you are and what are your values. Because when you're talking about the humanity in your business, it's very hard to commit to that and to make steps forward if at the core of it, you're just projecting out what society tells you what your values should be. Society is telling you what you, but you don't know what you really care about. So taking that time can be very helpful and look at what brings in the money. Astro, do I have time to say something? I know we're wrapping up soon. Oh, I was mute. Yeah, go Bia, please. Sure. Okay. Um, so something that I would say now that we're all in a good mindset, right? And like ready to pivot the business um, is to take this opportunity that maybe your business is a little bit like slow down to go back into the foundation and make sure that you can strengthen that foundation for growth in the future. Because I know that we're all going to grow it, but as we grow, more work's gonna come and it's gonna be like super chaotic. So enjoy now the time to look at your systems. Uh, I always talk to my clients when we create websites, like how can your website do the most work you can do so you can do less work on the business? So like how can your website be your assistant? So I always say, 
the website, they can connect with you. They can sign up to have a call with you on your calendar. They can pay for a consultation. You don't have to do anything. And all of that is already automated. So take opportunity to look through your systems and your structure and how much can you automate? How much can you make it easier for you? So when this, you know, pandemic goes away and we're not quarantined and I know that you're going to make your business grow and you're going to have more stuff to do that foundation is really solid so you you know everything just flows much easier I love that yeah I agree it's the perfect moment to do those things that you always said you didn't have the time to and oh my god the time just went by so quickly um I still have a bunch of questions but uh, we we run out of time. I guess we can meet again in another in another moment. Um, but I I'm going to this is a, a, a challenge. Um, could you give us just um, a heads up on and summarize if um, something that you are doing or or that you are seeing somebody in your um, around you doing that you definitely think it's a good idea and that could inspire someone. So who wants to start use this time to get hyper visible online uh, for six years now we've been working with businesses and helping them to use digital tools and i can honestly say that watching them go through this pandemic and not panic but using this time to use all of those digital tools that we've trained them on over all of these years has been very fulfilling so don't hesitate to get online people don't expect you to be perfect on your live streams on your facebook share 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 as much as you can and get hyper visible online because all you have to do is hit go live is hit li is go active so do that don't hide yourself so for me it's, it's sharing okay. your oh go go, go ahead, ahead. Um, so for me, it's just sharing your story. It's, 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 um, it's kind of a play on, on what Vivian had mentioned going online and being visible. I think that at, during this time is if you can ideate one new thing and, and, and share your story and, and how, how, why your business matters at this time, but why you started it to begin with, like who you wanted to touch base with. Um, for me, kind of digging that inside and during this quarantine time was so, um, was so predominant for me and in launching a podcast as a result four weeks ago, like who would know, right? Um, it's called Building Badassery, but um, it's one of those things of like, you know, why, what, why you even wanted to start your business in the first place, right? For me, it was because I wanted more women not to leave uh, money on the table, right? It was a huge thing for me. Like, why are we leaving money on the table? And that was my personal why. So sharing, sharing your story and, and connecting with your clients or even new potential clients online that way is so meaningful. And that's something that I think that would go a long way. Awesome. My two cents, so now you guys will have a bunch of cents, would be, uh, you know, we're all really good. And I'm seeing we all, everyone, every human is really good to talk about their strengths and all of your achievements and I did this I did that I know this um, I think that this is an excellent opportunity to identify and work on our weaknesses and um, really embrace those and if for you is online presence or you're introvert and you're kind of like you know um, wary of going in front of the camera then what can you do to really strengthen that muscle and back to what uh, to what you were saying about practicing and uh, you know, Tony Robbins is one of my favorites. And he says that what you practice in private is how you show up in public. So I think that now is a time to really bridge those gaps and no one expects you to spend 10 hours in personal development. But whatever that is, I know that I took an Excel course. I'm a nerd. <laughs> but it was really helpful. And I think that understanding what that is and bridging those gaps is key. I'll, I'll say, say for me, sorry, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, like, my connection went down, so I'm guessing that we're just wrapping up and saying, like, a closing statement, is that what Because mm -hmm. I didn't get your question to us. Uh, well, I would say something that makes me feel better in moments like this is if I am following my purpose to help the world, whatever that might look like, I will be helped by whatever you know you think guides you i think god is helping me through all of this and maybe it's 
you know, a higher power or whatever. But if you are doing what you're supposed to do and you are being of service first to help, everything is going to align and everything is going to work out. Just put that, you know, before everything. How, how can I help? How can I be of service? It's going to be okay. Echoing what everybody said, totally. Show up. If something's not working for you or hasn't been working for you, go inside and look and be generous and be generous with how you show up. Because right now, if you don't have a lot of monetary things to give, there's so many ways to be generous that don't require a pocketbook. So um, I'm very thankful for all of you for this conversation. It's really given me a lot of inspiration for the day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This has been so nurturing. So for everybody that's been watching, thank you for your questions. I think it makes it, uh, like it, we feel closer to you. So I really appreciate that. And um, if you want to follow these women, which I highly recommend, um, you have the Instagrams on the description. Also, if these resonated with you, just know that you can make donations for the content that you just heard. And, um, and uh, today is, I, I still th have to wrap my, my mind to know what day it is. Today is Tuesday. Uh, so tomorrow we'll be having another uh, lunch break. So we invite you to grab your lunch and come listen to us. It's going to be really interesting too. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. It's been a pleasure and all of you take care. Bye.